Um, he has a message to convey, and he is honest and sincere about it. And the message is, I believe, he uses words uh, as weapons to hit people over the head with, uh, to, to make them recognize that they are being hypocritical in every phase of their lives. Uh, words are his tools. Are there any niggers here tonight? Let's see, there's two niggers, and between those two niggers sits a kike. And there's another kike. That's two kikes and three niggers. And there's a spick, right? Hmm? There's another spick. Ooh, there's a wop, there's a Polak, and a, oh, a couple of grease balls. <laughs> and there's three lace curtain Irish mix. I got three kikes here. Do I hear five kikes? I got five kikes. Do I hear six spicks? I got six big. Do I hear seven niggers? I got seven niggers. Sold American. <laughs> I've passed with seven niggers, six spicks, five nicks, four cracks, three guineas, and one wop. You almost punched me out, didn't you? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to make a point. The point is the suppression of words. Now, dig. A certain disease is on its way to becoming an epidemic. Why? Because nobody talks about it. Nobody even wants to say the word. Because talking about it makes you the worst person in the community. What we have to do is we got to start talking about it. See, what we really need is to get some of our national heroes to admit that they've had it. It's the suppression of the word that gives it the power, the violence, the viciousness. Makes you think you've got the right to say a word like that in a public place. You know what word I'm talking about. It's against the law. If you ever said it in front of my wife or kid, I'd punch you right out. Toward the end, he wouldn't do any bits, he wouldn't do any jokes. All he wanted to do is stand out there every night and read from the transcripts of his trials. My first trial was in San Francisco in front of a judge, no jury. The judge was really distinguished looking. He looked like a movie judge, like Andy Hardy's father. So I said, well, that's cool. He'll be fair and kindly. Your Honor, if I just might interject, even if there were minors present, I don't think that I said anything that would have done them any harm. Man, I think you better let your attorney try this case. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to find you guilty right now. Oh. However, I will grant a continuance as you have requested. Thank you, sir. Now, it's my understanding that he has a performance on uh, Saturday. Saturday. Yes, sir. I want to caution you right now, young man. If I get a report that you have repeated any of this language, any of these words, you will take the consequences. Is that clear? If I repeat what words? Sorry. If I repeat what words specifically, Your Honor? You say anything that is obscene, and I'll take that into consideration when I finally dispose of the case. Obscene means to the average person, applying contemporary standards of the community. The dominant appeal of the matter being to arouse a prurient interest, which is a morbid or shameful interest in nudity of sex excretion, which goes substantially beyond the limits of such matters, and is matter utterly without redeeming social importance. Now, sex and obscenity are not synonymous. In order to make sex obscene, it is necessary that the portrayal of it must be done in such a way that its dominant tendency is to corrupt the average adult by creating a clear and present danger of antisocial behavior. <coughs> I can't work this shit. My stomach is killing me. I know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. This for you guys over there. I read in Chicago paper. I read in Chicago paper. There's an article here in Chicago paper about these transvestites who are posing as policemen. In other words, they're police officers who are dressing up like pretty ladies. Here's Officer Dolan. Stan, this guy's calling down the bath. Officer Stanley Dolan said that the hardest part of police work was learning how to walk in high heels, man. And I think that's a gas, man. You guys are so naive, man. I defend you all the time, but you're so naive. You think the guy is going to grab you, and you're going to say, Okay, now, stop that. You can't touch me. I'm not a beautiful woman. I'm a police officer, and you're under arrest. But you don't, guys don't know who you're dealing with, man. They don't care. They'll just grab you. 
And they'll say, I don't care if you are a cop. You got a cute ass, and I'm going to shoot you anyway, man. <laughs> it's not nice, man. Hey! It's not nice to incite. It's not nice to entrap. It's not nice to exploit those people, man. They're sick people. You want to know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Vietnam. It's like... Catholicism is like one big franchise, man. It's like, it's like Howard Johnson and Kennedy, man. He... No, no, man, no. He can't... Man, I can't put together what I'm trying to say. And the thing that I'm trying to tell you is it's harassment, man. It's repression. It's club owners being called up in the middle of the night and being told not to hire me or they're going to lose their liquor license. It's Vietnam. It's atrocities here and there. suggestion is that you now make a request for a continuance for the purpose of retaining new counsel. If you do, then I will so grant that request. Please, Your Honor, I just want a chance to talk to the court, just to talk to you, to another human being without all the legal double-talking bullshit. Mr. Bruce, you are making this very difficult for me. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but see, attorneys keep telling me, don't worry, it's, 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 it's just a lower court. They're all assholes. We lose here, we'll win in a higher court. But I don't believe I should lose here because I don't believe I'm doing anything Mr. wrong. Mr. Bruce, would you please sit down? I believe I do have the right to say the things I'm saying. Mr. Bruce, I'm running out of patience. If you just let me do my act for the court, I'll take my chances. If after you hear me do it, if you don't think it's funny, if you don't think it has any redeeming social value, if it just strikes you as dirty and... I cannot I... allow this to continue. Your Honor, I so want your respect. I know you're a good person, and I know that this legal system is the best in the world, but you, you, you can't seem to hear me. Mr. Bruce, sit down. When I'm talking about tits and ass, I'm not up there just to shock the audience by repeating those words, tits and ass, ass and tits and tits and ass. The point I'm trying to make is that we all live in a very Mr. Bruce, society. you leave me no alternative but to find you in contempt of this court. sentence me. I have no money left. Why not be sentenced now? I can't afford to be on trial. The police took away my cabaret card. I can't work anymore. Please, sentence me. No, I will not sentence you today. I order you, when you appear before me again, to appear with suitable counsel. And I'm further ordering psychiatric evaluation by the psychiatric clinic. December 16th. Bail continues. You're trying to stop the information. Bailiff, will you please remove this from the courtroom? You see, that's where it's at. You, you can't stop her. the information Pardon because the information keeps the country the strong. Oh, you need a deviant. Don't shut him up. You need that madman to stand up and tell you when you're blowing it. And the harder you come down on the deviant, the more you need him. Please, don't take away my words. They're just words. I'm not hurting anybody. Found guilty in New York and sentenced to four months in the penitentiary. Is that right? Yes. He was very frightened of being confined in jail, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, among his belongings, when uh, after he died, they found a letter from the bank, Bank of America.
said he lost the house. Do you suppose those things and that letter had anything to do with his death? Look, I know where you're trying to take this, and it's just not so. You never do a thing like that.